following thoughts, opinions, stories, and expressions are meant for those who will appreciate them. If you don't, we hope you keep an open soul to encounter another here on 34 Questions. Peace. In three, two, one. What's going on, folks? Welcome to 34 Questions. I'm your host, 34. And tonight, I have a very special guest. Jake Demansties is in the building. <laughs> How you doing tonight, Jake? Good, good. Yo, thank you so much for having me on. This is this is gonna be awesome. I'm really excited for this. Likewise, man. Likewise. Uh, just want to thank you for for making time for this. I know it's not always uh, easy to open up op open up about some real stuff, uh, and also just you know being open to share your story. I definitely appreciate it, man. Oh yeah, thanks again. The show. Uh, for the folks out there who are unfamiliar with the flow of the show, we do some intro questions, some warm up questions just to set the tone. Uh, after that, we'll jump into a few games. Um, after the games, we'll get into the main meet where we turn to the Wheel of Fate uh, and it'll, that will guide us through our conversation. <laughs> and then after that, we'll finish it off with some closeout questions. Sound good to you, Jake? That sounds awesome. This is going to be fun. For sure. And for the folks out there who don't know, this is the first time me and Jake are touching base um and it's kind of funny because we, we we're contacting each other through instagram but i had two of your co-hosts on first so uh you yep. know yep. i'm just collecting uh <laughs> collecting all the podcasters out there uh, <laughs> like but pokemon man you, you're catching <laughs> them all and uh, you're gonna be a gym leader soon yeah <laughs> maybe one day one day <laughs> um all right man well let's jump into the warm-up my very first question for you is how have you been you know it's been a crazy couple of years you've been doing great you've been doing good how you been lately man you know man i am like like i feel like you're sincerely asking instead of like you know when someone when you're getting uh something at a convenience store and people are like oh how are you doing and you're like good you know i'm just let me get my food and get the hell out of here yeah um, yeah i i will say like on a real note uh for a while there um like and not not like since the pandemic or anything but there was like a bit of a rough patch from the end of december of last year till now like i i like the company i worked for closed down and uh you know i was like oh there was this this crazy thing uh unemployment was like not working for me like i was eligible i'm getting it literally settled out now like i have a job now and i'm getting back paid for it now but it was like going through the system to get unemployment was like nearly impossible it's all through like computer and i had like a username error and it was like just not happening for me so it was like phone call hours and hours of phone calls and everything and it's like feels like now i I can like breathe actually thank god just in time for this episode i can i can breathe again so that's that's where i've been at i've been good i've been, I've been good now but went through the struggle a little bit trying to figure out what's what's about to happen but, but i yeah. hear you man well i'm glad that all got squared away um you know it seems like you said this was since last december like the most recent december right yep yeah yeah i mean honestly i think with we you know unemployment and our state government and or federal wherever it comes from i think just with what happened with corona and how everybody was pretty much unemployed and you know yep. right now they're just really trying to tighten all the screws up make sure they're not getting any phonies um you know trying to That's, get money from it really them. did feel like a bureaucratic like weeding process of like do you really want this do you really need this like and I was like, yes, <laughs> I was like, I'm not no. lying. Like, <laughs> are we allowed to curse on here? Like I just, it slips out sometimes. Oh, like, absolutely. Don't curse. Like... Don't, don't, don't feel okay. like you have to censor yourself. This is all about just you being you. So yeah, no okay. worries. I just realized I did it. And I was like, uh, I don't know if uh, <laughs> he's cool with this. Right. Absolutely cool. Absolutely cool. Um, but yeah, man. So definitely ha happy to hear that, you know, things are turning around for you. And even though it's like, you know, almost the fourth month, you know, 2022 could still be a tremendous year for you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I love that uh, optimism. That is, I need more <laughs> of that in my life, I think. Yeah. I mean, man, that's that's all I really have, honestly, is optimism. Um, you know, I just had this conversation with uh, with my team at work and we were talking about how our greatest strengths could be our, our greatest weakness, too. Um, so for mm. me, my optimism totally gives me blind spots you know or maybe a little out of touch with reality at times but you know honestly with 
Like the way I see it is that there's so much negativity in the world. I'd rather I'm be sorry, like a stink bug just like flew at me and <laughs> I like got scared. Sorry, you good? no, you I good. don't mean to cut you off. My no. bad. <laughs> That's gonna be a great reaction later on. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> it's gonna be the thumbnail clip of this video. Just this guy freaks out at whatever the <laughs> fuck. Um. <laughs> no, no, you good. Um, but just to just to finish that point, like there's so much negativity. I'd rather be on the the other end of the spectrum where it's like positivity all the time. Uh, is that healthy i don't know i guess you could ask some people and be like that's an unhealthy way to live sometimes but you know as long as it keeps me where i need to be and you know be able to spread that positivity with others i think i'll be happy um yeah i think that's a strong like a characteristic of strength like whether it be like spiritually emotionally you know like um this is like kind of a weird way to segue into that but do you do you watch anime have you ever been into anime growing up or anything like that so you tell me if this is anime so i, I like pokemon i like digimon i like that's anime yeah that's anime dragon ball z and hell yeah that's anime Yu-Gi-Oh. but yeah pretty much that's where it stopped and like i know anime is like blowing up like crazy with this next generation um yeah. so I, I haven't be, been able to keep up with everything that's been going on but wh- no, what me about neither, anime? But- yeah. Um, what I wanted to say was like uh, I remember it was like it might have even been from Dragon Ball Z or some, one of those old animes like Yu Yu Hakusho or something but I remember there's like this mentality that's like uh, uh, that's kind of like that optimism like yeah like you're saying it may leave you open to like like being naive you know someone could like take advantage of you or whatever but like just kind of showing the good in 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 things and like in yourself and in the world is like i think just you're right you're right it's like the better way to be show that person who might do wrong to you that you are genuinely good and you're looking out for them and like it could change them for the better and you got to be strong to have that characteristic to say yeah i'm gonna take the hit on the on the face like but you know hopefully uh it's all for the best so that's that's some strong that's a strong aspect to have I hope so, man. I've definitely been called foolish, uh, you know, more than once in my life. But, you know, it's, it's how you see it, right? Like, sometimes I think yeah. people who find it or see it as being foolish, maybe they've been hurt, you know, because they were that person and they got taken advantage of. And so it's like, I'm never going to be that person again. Um, I yeah. think I'm just fortunate that the times where I may have felt I've been taken advantage of, it wasn't such a big deal. Um, you know, just being able to kind of see the bigger picture in those moments. Cause yeah, you know, it could hurt or I could feel wronged, but honestly, like we're all trying to find what's the best for us. Right. So that's how I kind of take it. Unfortunately, that's how people see it sometimes. But, um, let's move on to number two. My second question for you in the warm up is what would you like the audience to know about you? Oh, damn. Um, I guess that, uh, I'm just a really like I'm a huge goofball like as lame as that might might sound like being I'm I'm like really into comedy and like people that like comedy like if they hear someone say that that's like cringy as hell but it is the tr- truth it's I just like am so goofy I'm always like thinking of bits in my mind uh, anytime someone is explaining you know uh something that happened to them in the day i'm always thinking about like the situations and how i often like just am observing every situation and like i think a lot of things are just insane all the time and like people just kind of breeze by all the insanity like so i'm just always like laughing at like just shit that i think is like uh a little weird just often so i'm i'm a pretty like uh yeah i'm a goofball yeah that's what it comes down to i I hear you man for sure uh what would you say is the biggest misconception about you hmm (laughs) that that question kind of implies that a lot of people are thinking about me but uh (laughs) (laughs) who knows man you don't you're not in people's heads who knows i i think i've come off as a dick before for the exact same reason like i've said like uh just kind of like laughing at at things people have said to me and i think like it can come off as me being like laughing at them or something when it's like i'm more or less just laughing at the situation itself like i'm not like calling them a fool or anything or you know i just think i can come off as like pretentious but uh you know i i don't have any right to be pretentious so i just i 
you know, I, 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 yeah, I think being pretentious is, is the biggest, the biggest one. Um, I got you. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I have the, I have the same, uh, I, I, habit i guess if like someone's telling me a story or something happens where maybe it's not the best thing that could have happened and i'll just laugh um and i just think it's because like damn this situation is so ridiculous or this situation is so bad that i gotta smile or, or laugh at like i can't believe this is exactly. happening <laughs> yep that's what it is i feel like uh people will just say a story to you and i'll like clock like five or six things that i'm like we all do think this stuff is normal, but it is like just kind of taking it out of the box and like looking at a situation. Often, it's just crazy. Like, like I can't, I can't even think of an example, but maybe one will pop up later and, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Like the, the weird way I, I just like to think about things, like deconstruct a lot of stuff. I got you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have a lot of people always correcting me. Like, uh, why are you laughing? Or I remember, I think I, I said that about myself in another meeting. And then one of my coworkers was like, it's all in your head, man. <laughs> like, it's, it's not really funny. It's just all <laughs> <Yeah>. in your head. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's why I'm a goofball. Like, I often do feel like, uh, oh, boy, like, I just look like an idiot right now. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'm having fun out here. So <laughs> and that's an important thing, man. I think, you know, for us yeah. to be able to see that uh, in situations and just in general life makes us tend to be a little more happier and more like you know easygoing than most folks yeah third question for you in the warm-up is if i were to do something in your honor a way to express the energy you possess what could i do <laughs> um my god uh damn i don't wow is it like is it often people have just like long pauses of thought like uh, on your show? Cause I'm just like really trying to think about this genuinely. Um, I, I like the long pauses more than the fast answers. Cause I feel like people are trying to like beat the game, but it's not really a game, you know, so yeah. like, take your time, take your time. I mean, yeah. well, I heard Rob took up the entire episode with the introduction <laughs> questions. So I don't want to do that. Don't um, worry. Don't worry. Cause I'm better than Rob. And I will say that, <laughs> I will say that out loud again and again. No, Rob is great. I love Rob. Hey. Um, you were to do something in, in my honor. Um, wait, one more time. I'm sorry. What was the full question? Yeah, if I were to do something in your honor, a way to express the energy you possess, what could I do? So let's say you like, for you, you move to another country and then you guys, you had the fellas on the pot, like your co-hosts, you know, they're like, oh man, we want to do something for Jake. What's something they could do for you? Um... Well, like the the easiest like answer, I think, would just keep doing, you know, comedy and, and s sketch comedy and stuff like that. Like we just started writing sketch comedy to shoot and uh, I would want them to just keep up with comedy. Like I'm all about that. Like I, I don't do any stand up or anything like that myself, but we write often and we just it's like seems like it's all I care about. So just like comedy and just doing funny things and uh just uh like uh so okay we um i saw the new batman recently and um there was a scene in the movie that i'm not gonna give anything away but someone in the movie on the screen like not in the movie theater like on the screen had a reaction that i just thought was like so unwarranted for the for the moment and I just like laughed my ass off and like people just like I felt like I was one of the only ones like some other people laughed, but I really just like took it there <laughs> and like uh, I just feel like that's what it's all about. Like if they just are not afraid to like, you know, think like just, you know, laugh at what they think is funny and stuff like that. That's it's a weird answer, but yeah. we won't now that we know we won't hold back. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. I've seen the movie too. What scene are you talking about in particular? And spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert for anyone watching. But yeah, I, I want to okay. know now. I'm curious. <laughs> so it's. Uh, do you remember when uh, they call him Feral? He's the Penguin, and they have him like, uh, like the Batman and Catwoman kind of have him in this moment, and they're like showing him like a picture of uh, what the the mm. Riddler has done to somebody. Um, they show him a picture, and I think it's like 
This guy was like in a saw-like contraption where they had like mice running to his head and they were like eating his face or something, but they showed the penguin and he was just like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and he was just, <laughs> just like so much calmer just a second ago. And this is also like a, a like a kingpin, like mafia leader. Like, do you, I would think he might have seen things similar to this. And the fact that he's just like, Jesus, I've never seen murder before. What is this? <laughs> like, I just thought it was really like kind of out of place and uh, just silly. Just just a little silly. I got you. I got you. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I was pretty blasted watching that movie, so I can't <laughs> really recall okay. this day season. <laughs> Wait a second. So you do smoke or... Uh, Smoke, that- smoke what? No. <laughs> Matt. No, no, yeah, that fucking weed. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm on a hiatus right now. Like I said, like I, I just, I was on a, I was like waiting for unemployment. I just got a job recently, so I had to like pass a P test. But I, man, yeah, I wish I saw that movie Blasted, man. <laughs> so I, I'm all about that. Like I think uh, characteristically, like I just seem like a stoner when I when I'm sober regardless oh yeah i know i know that too <laughs> okay yeah uh, but what's it called i think it's funny you're talking about sketch comedy i would totally try to make a skit of that one part where uh riddler's like bruce wayne and really i like it because it, that's just kind of funny to me <laughs> yeah, man. just keep saying it yeah yeah okay there's yeah. like a few things that do you know like paul dano like just in general like his, his acting it was this was the okay. first one but i heard he plays like one of like psychological thrillers and stuff or somebody is that true yeah yeah for some of his films he just like is kind of this actor who has a very specific um kind of way he does things so at the end of the movie when he's like i think it's when he's in jail already and they they kind of thwart his plans a bit and he's like screaming like no no, no!" (laughs) like that is like the most paul dano shit like ever he just (laughs) does these screams like that and uh yeah he's really extra in that in that way but it's great i i do love it but yeah that is so funny just yeah, you pointed out the most Paul Dano things. It would be great to make a sketch about that. Just him in a normal situation, just reacting in that way to everything would be uh, pretty funny. That, that makes me also think about, like, I think, you know, we were talking about laughing at situations. Every time there's a scene where, let's say, the main character, for you watch Breaking Bad? Or not? No, I have not seen Breaking Bad. Okay. No. So, uh, I, I know it's amazing. Everyone tells me <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I think there's this one scene and this goes for any uh any show or movie but if they have a scene of somebody that's in a situation that's so bad that they just laugh hysterically man i connect to that so much <laughs> i was like man yeah i think that's me too like i think like going back to like uh the thing i first said in uh maybe the first intro question is just like kind of laughing at a lot of or pointing out a lot of the absurdities that we go through on a day-to-day basis is like yeah it kind of if sometimes like the pressure of the world is so crazy like there feels like there's so much wrong that doesn't make sense that like you to quote like maybe another batman term like i feel like uh this is actually something like another comedian has said like there's this really funny guy out there that uh, he's a character but I, I don't remember his real name, but he goes by Bugman. I don't know if you ever heard of Bugman. Um, oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it's it's really out there shit. But he he like has talked about this thing. It's called like being Jokerfied, where like you just mm. like can't help but laugh because it's so like fucked up and insane. It's like that's not right. This doesn't make any sense. This is my most visceral reaction to this thing that should not be. And that's like kind of. I guess how I think a lot of the time is, uh, you know, like when when a living wage uh, where I'm at, I'm in Pennsylvania, when a living wage is like just hitting $15 an hour now and like that's not even everywhere and they're going to call that a living wage. Like I've lived on my own and uh, I mean, it's just that's not a living wage. Like you can't do shit with that. It's not fair. So it's I just think it's like so insane and that's like considered like a norm like people were like begging for 15 dollars an hour you know like the fight for 15 with mcdonald's and everything like 
they got that 15, but that's still just, it's never going to be enough. Like if they were living by themselves, if they had to be by themselves, that's like impossible. Just that yeah. job by itself. And they're going to call that a living wage. So it's, it's just like, that's one of many things. Like I'm just like, so much is so wrong. Like there's, there's a lot of suffering out there. And there's like a lot of people also on the other end of that spectrum, making a shit ton of money doing like what I consider some of the stupidest shit possible. And it's like, I just don't see how this guy who's going to break his back, like blood, sweat and tears working for that $15 an hour is, you know, not going to get anywhere close to this guy who had some like, uh, I don't know, who like made a, a cool TikTok video or something <laughs> and like got into NFTs or some shit like that. I, I just it's it's all crazy. to me. Yeah, man. I mean, it, I feel you. And, you know, what makes me feel better is I got to just say, you can't hate the player, hate the game, you know, like kind of thing. Facts, uh, facts. And, and also it's like those people who make a uh, shit ton of money off of like, you know, NFTs and dumb TikToks, they are smart, you know, like they understand the game maybe a little bit better. So like, can't exactly hate them, but it just seems like it does seem ridiculous at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. Know. Yeah. No, no, I got you, man. I got you. Uh, there's a lot of ridiculous stuff in the world. And I think you know that's the way we kind of deal with this is to laugh at it and try to find the, the the bright spots and hold on to them for as long as we can because i mean that's the thing right like happiness is fleeting or you know uh contentment is fleeting we're always working to to get back into that headspace or into that that's um that place in life and that i think well a lot of people would say that's just what life is right it's that cycle yeah uh, and that attempt and that try and uh you know we get more out of life by going through it than somebody that i think you know has a million dollars and is i don't know i'm not i've never been a millionaire but you know yeah. hopefully <laughs> hopefully they they hate their lives because they can't do anything else <laughs> yeah but yeah where they yeah. have like like value like maybe with their money they lack you know um experience and like social kind of like skills in that way you know who who knows what what like and what do you consider more valuable i guess at that point but very yeah. true very true uh let's move on to the fourth question last question of the warm-up uh so you will okay. beat rob you will beat rob <laughs> yeah i'm like <laughs> okay cool <laughs> uh on a scale from one to ten how well do you know yourself hmm if you ask me this question last year it would be like Mm, like a six and uh i think i'm always learning more and more about me i don't even think it's gone up that much but i think in the past few years especially in the pandemic we had like a lot of time to learn about ourselves so i would say like not even a big difference like maybe like a seven and a half and or an eight actually yeah confident eight confident because, eight. Uh, yeah there's like a I've had like a lot of people in my life uh, just kind of, and I'm thankful for this, like reality checked me uh, on a lot of shit. And I, I really, I come to appreciate that. Like some, the truth can be hard to swallow, but you know, you, you gotta, gotta know, you gotta know yourself, man. If you're, if you're ever trying to grow and, and really trying to slide into that slot that will allow you to grow. Um, yeah. You gotta be told what's up. Like, um, yeah. No, for yeah, sure. People who love me who will tell me when I'm doing something wrong, and I appreciate that. So, honestly, man, I don't know if I can say that confidently for myself. And it's not so much that I don't think I have true friends or anything, but I think we you know we're just people who don't like confrontation, and it's hard to tell you the truth yeah. sometimes. Um, because you know you want to show that you care, but sometimes the truth makes it feel like you're 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 attacking someone. So I don't know. I'm still trying to find that balance for myself. Uh, have you, you have you checked out the new Bel Air show? No, you okay. know it, that show is like something that it's like an easy target in my mind as like this is easy to make fun of. But to be honest, like people that I respect uh, who are like I think really articulate critics have said that that show kicks ass, and mm, uh, I was kind of really surprised by that. So no, but go on. Yeah. Oh well, I, I brought it up because there's the 
most recent episode which was episode eight there was just a lot of scenes when there was hella confrontation between like you know two characters that had a lot of either issues from the past they're trying to work through and you know as an audience member who doesn't like confrontation it was just making me uneasy and anxious i'm like oh yeah. shit like I, I can't believe they're they're, they're, they're talking about like uh, i gotta get out of here <laughs> you know like <laughs> I mean, press pause, take a breather, because I just don't know how things are going to play out. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it did make me feel like, damn, I wish I could do that. I wish that, you know, I could say these things or just because they, they were doing it in a way that was like, yo, we need to talk about this. But, you know, a lot of the times it was like, oh, this is not the time for it. So let's like move on to something. Let's let's pre I don't like pretending, though, or I don't like, uh, you know, acting like everything's cool when it's not. But I mm -hmm. guess. That's what I already do by avoiding confrontation. Damn, it just blew my mind right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> you're having revelations. Like you're like having your own therapy, like through yourself. That's actually that is the best. Like, you know, uh, during this pandemic and everything, like uh, I might sound crazy when I say this, but do you like when you're by yourself ever like talk to yourself out loud? Like, oh yeah, 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 for sure. Like, or like, you know, you, you tell, give me no, an example. I was example. just gonna say, it would definitely, it definitely, like, people point this out. Like, I know a lot of people that do that, but I, I ask the question because it's like, sometimes, actually, especially when I used to smoke weed, um, I would kind of just, like, it was almost like a form of meditation or prayer that I would like think about an issue, and sometimes it just feels like it's hard to like get out like all the. Uh, the info in your head sometimes you feel like there's too much anxiety and there's too much going on so i would just like find myself talking about it out loud like okay so what happened in this situation that you know where is this the stem of this problem coming from and you don't find it right away but you start with like the facts that are not always objective but just like the way you feel like about something and you're like okay so why did i feel this way about this how did it lead to that way but like what just happened with you, like just like talking about a problem and, and like coming to the answer yourself is like, oh, my God, it's so amazing. That revelation like uh, but sometimes, yeah, like I feel like if someone heard me just like running through a problem like that happens, like they'd be like, is he OK in there? Like, <laughs> is he all good? But like, I, I feel like I'm better than ever for it sometimes. And it's like uh, when it comes to issues like confrontation. I, that shit weighs on me really heavy when I feel like I've done something wrong or it feels like I've been wronged. Like, I'll actually lose sleep over it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like what you said in that show where they're like, uh, they want to talk about it, but they're like, we got to find the right time to talk about it. This isn't the right time. That kind of drives me crazy, but that's mm -hmm. something I need to be better with is like, I'm ready to talk about this, but they might not be ready to talk about this. So like, that's something I need to work on because I pushed a little hard as like, you know, I've been like, no, I feel like I need to talk about this right now, but that's not fair. So, you know, you got to get good with that. But yeah, just um, confrontation weighs, weighs on you really heavy. And that's like, uh, I can't keep it bottled up inside. Like it, actually, especially if I felt like I've done wrong, um, I'm really quick to like think about, um, like kind of objectively if i was being a jerk or not especially after and actually with weed it's like hits me harder than ever where it's like i'll do something when i'm sober in the day and you know i even if i wasn't actually a dick but i just thought things went a little weird like i get high and i'm like oh my god what, what was i doing like why did i why did i talk like that what was i doing mm. i don't know yeah like i mean a, it's a whole thing like that it's it's a Overanalyzation sometimes like yep. or the paranoia right like i like to say we doesn't yeah. get me paranoid but because we're thinking about <laughs> every single move that we made then maybe that's that's how it creeps up right um yeah but no nah, no nah, i hear you man it's it's a tough it's, I, I think it's just stuff we we all have to work on i think like yeah honestly i i respect the people who can do the confrontation part and i always tell them that like sometimes it might be at work too where i have a co-worker that just likes to be direct or like you know likes to say something even though it may sound rude or whatever but you know they, they will tell you to your face and they feel uneasy about that they're like damn man do i come off rude and then i'm like honestly maybe sometimes but you know that's something i super admire that <laughs> i know that for me trying to be nice all the time it's like that's not 
that just doesn't come easy to me. It's not it doesn't seem as natural. Um, so yeah. every everybody plays their roles. Everybody has you know their their strengths, and even if something is a weakness, it could be a strength in a certain in the in the right time. That's going to be what some people need, you know. So yeah yeah like with that whole aggressive and directness it's like it depends on where that's coming from like that energy if it's like out of a place of love then that's like a pretty good thing like tough love can be good like it needs to be the thing you can hear sometimes but if it's like for the sake of just i need to get my point across like i don't even know if i'm right like that's i don't know that can be some like toxic behavior and you got to be careful with that you know no no for sure um and i don't think it's always clear you know in the moment sometimes right. it takes a few times yeah. to see it a few times to to be in the in the room to feel the energy um but you know i like to tell people it's like at least cut the confidence part and you know feeling good about your decisions is what ties into that fourth question it's like how well do you know yourself like if you yeah. truly know that you're coming from a good place then it shouldn't matter what anybody else thinks you know but if you're concerned yeah. then maybe you don't feel like it's coming from a good place and like you know you're trying to grow or you're trying to work on that um mm -hmm. but yeah all right man let's jump into the games part of the interview uh this first part is a uh, true or false you i have these statements that maybe everyone has heard before you probably come across but you just let me know if you feel like they're true or false uh, okay this first one is people are ultimately good hmm damn i don't know that mm. that comes down to like am i just supposed to answer true or false or no 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 to you dive into it dive into it give me your thoughts okay. on it yeah I don't know like that the whole good and evil thing that's like that's later than us actually existing like that's a concept we came to and decided on for thousands of years after we've already been doing stuff so it's like uh you know the 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 universe is like always kind of eating itself in a way like animals are you know they kill to to get food and uh uh who's to say what's what's right like when it comes to humans it's like those things kind of get tossed away like the the whole natural thing um but are we inherently good um i would i want to say i've seen i've seen a lot of good like in my life locally like in a localized way i've seen a lot of good and you see a lot of bad too like you see a lot of evil and what I consider evil is like, uh, you know, like um, kind of tarnishing like relationships, like say like a friend like steals money from another friend. Like I, I would call that evil because that's not just the act of taking money. That's like breaking uh, trust and trust, I think, is an inherently good quality. And breaking that is like that's that's like uh, unsacred, practically. So mm -hmm. um I don't know the way the way the world is like going back to some of the intro questions or whatever how i think that there's so much in the world that seems crazy that we're always laughing at like i think we're laughing because we are like that's not good and everyone's just like we're all just letting it happen all the time mm. so if that's happening all the time i'd say it's like if it's like a percentage wise or ways on a scale weighed on a scale i would say like uh maybe the evil is outweighing the good but i think it's there's uh like i i i, I hope there's a turn you know i hope i hope uh we can all be good and help each other out truly i, I really do hope that but um you know the main the main evil out there in my opinion is greed and that's like the big thing like uh holding a lot of good back like greed will turn a good man evil um i so, got you yeah 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 no i mean honestly that that statement is something that even just through these conversations on the podcast is it has me thinking um you know i had somebody tell me like what is good you know it's so subjective um mm -hmm. you know something that we consider bad like i don't know if you're talking about greed uh i'm not gonna say the name but like amazon you know like do they really need to do everything Bro. that they're doing like 100 <laughs> like you have no idea how that 
shit hit me so bad like it struck such a nerve i think for people that were even like for amazon and jeff bezos like when he went up to sp not even space like when he went up to like the the crest of space like the most fucking pathetic like <laughs> thing possible to me just be like I, I don't even know but spending all of that money to do that then telling the world publicly like hey you guys all paid for me to go up to space like and then also paying like some cnn correspondents just a shit ton of money and unrealistically huge amount of money to be covering that shit all day like it was gonna get covered regardless but he's just like nah make sure that this is everyone seeing this i want everyone to hear me say this to them that like they they bought all these luxuries like that they don't i'm like really kind of like showing my political tendencies here but like buying all these luxuries things they don't really need like basically kind of crap but like we all do it you know we, we all, all buy luxuries it. and whatnot in, <laughs> in the first world and um but just kind of saying like na 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 boo boo like i'm flying up to space with your money like it just it hits so hard like for people who have nothing especially it's like they're like oh you're going up to space that's cool i'm just like trying to get a meal today and uh it's just fucked up in my opinion that's like where a lot of the insanity i laugh about like comes from because it's i i can't do shit about that i can't do a goddamn thing because like there's a going back to what's good and what's evil like you know people will say luxuries are good because they're like adding this like unnatural comfort to them and like it feels good but is it objectively good or and is good even a thing you can claim to be objective like it's a lot of people will say it's just a subjective thing um and so like they're you know no one's no one's gonna stop ordering amazon because jeff bezos did that no, you know. I mean, I still fucking use Amazon, and I yeah, think I, that's <laughs> I have some credit on Amazon. I'm using to like rent movies and shit. It's great, but <laughs> but that's... it doesn't feel fair. You know, it just doesn't feel fair. So, um, as far as like finding the the objective good, um, I think that's just a little bit harder to to source. You know, like, um, uh, for us to find the objective good, we'd have to ask everybody, is this a good thing? And then if we can all agree that it's good, then I think that's objectively good. You know, uh, like. Well, even in that way, though, it's it's like uh, it's just localized to like people who are at our consciousness level, like, you know, like mm, and, and okay. like that's just the earth. Like what if there's uh, other beings out there that have just like different ways of thinking, different concepts and everything like in at the end of the day, like, yeah, you're right. Like on our planet, if we all came to like that conclusion, like it would be an, a thing of being objective until like an alien idea came about. And I don't mean like alien, like little green men. I mean, just like an abstract concept, like kind of altered our way of thinking. But yeah, you're right. At that point, there would practice. The line would be so blurred. Objective would be subjective. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, the second statement is happiness is the most important thing. yeah yeah i i do agree with that like i think that's true i just think it's uh it can be really hard for people to get there and like sometimes the way like the path getting there is harder for others and sometimes it seems like it's not the most important thing like if uh there's like a that hierarchy of needs like that would say different that would say like basic necessities like food water shelter and stuff is most important but um there's like maybe that is actually more important but it <laughs> sometimes feels like uh like what's the point in living if mm. like you know you're yeah, not be. going to find that happiness who knows um, it's the thing that that drives people's like ambitions i think and those ambitions can do a lot of of good for people so yeah i think happiness is is important for sure i i totally agree with you i think for me um you know being that optimistic person that i am i have to scale it down to just say balance is the most important thing i think you know as much as there is bad there has to be as much good um and trying to keep the, that level is probably what keeps me happiest the most um because there, there really is no like denying like 
you know like you said i don't want to be naive or foolish i have to face reality sometimes um so my personal thing i think this is something i used to believe a lot as a kid and maybe even my 20s but now that i'm in my 30s i'm like oh nah it's it's really just balance uh and then my last one which i think you probably heard before but there is no try just do true or false um hmm it's no try just do um i think like that mentality will get you to try things but you might not accomplish the thing like you're trying to do but i think that's like not a bad like way to think about doing things at all it's like um yeah just like do it and see what happens and take away your experiences from it, you know? Um, so I would say that's, that's like false, like mm. to a certain extent, but I think that like, uh, that's like a good way to look at things. Um, if you want to do something, you know, but you're afraid to try it, just, you know, just make yourself do it and see if you like it at the end of it, you know? then you have that insight after or, or you you have hindsight as to like what you like and don't like or whether it was worth it in the first place yeah so, i got yeah. you i mean the mindset definitely allows you to be open more to do things uh but i mean like for me i think what, what made it relate for me is that i always tell people oh look i'm trying to do a podcast and then mm -hmm. i have those people who are supportive and tell me like you're not trying you're doing it but like for yeah, me, yeah. I still feel like, no, I'm just trying because <laughs> it's, it's not like the numbers are going up. It's not my career or anything. So I'm continuing to try. But I can see I see their point, too. And for me to yeah. build my own confidence up, I should take ownership of that and be like, yeah, I, I'm doing this. Uh, but it's still just some hard sometimes, you know? Yeah. Well, your your definition is different than, you know, as to what doing a podcast is like you're you're when you say that you're like. I want to be successful podcasting mm. and like they're looking at it at like the most basic level like well you are doing it right like you're, you're literally recording episodes with guests on them and you're putting them out there like so <laughs> it's like but you're not catching me man I'm trying to do this I'm trying to like <laughs> be successful <Yeah. laughs> no, I, honestly like I gotta say right off the bat like this, this format like your whole setup in the background and just like your camera and the way you look like your whole aesthetic is like this is some professional ass shit like i this is make it's making me feel like i'm on a uh, <laughs> fucking dope ass podcast bro like this i mean this is this is a dope ass podcast I'll i appreciate that, right that man yeah i appreciate yeah. that um yeah man i mean well we could talk about that maybe on your podcast about the aesthetics and yeah how, how it came to this but uh yeah you yeah. gotta come on I, we still got questions but you gotta come on oh absolutely absolutely oh yeah uh, and then we're gonna skip this the second game um uh, just because just to let you know we got about 18 minutes left in the pod okay. uh so i, I do want to spin the wheel with you a couple times and yeah, then yeah. let me pop it open for you there you go so just remember after this first spin don't worry i'll be able to see it the audience will be able to see it <laughs> it's like, it's i'm like, seeing like this line of this <laughs> thing moving i'm like oh shit like what do i do <laughs> no you're okay. good I'll, I'll let you know and uh don't worry i won't lie you you will see it on the regular episode <laughs> but here goes the first <laughs> okay. spin and uh just a heads up if it, there's anything too personal too deep you don't want to touch it feel free to pass no biggie okay uh so number 25 is what are your distractions? Hmm. I, yeah, just like uh, uh, those those luxuries we were talking about earlier. Probably like uh, you know, I like playing video games. I like doing that. I like uh, watching movies. Um, hanging, I, I like hanging out with friends. Like if, if it all depends on what the what I am considering distractions from or for, you know, if it's like distractions from like career goals and things like that, then yeah, I would point out like video games and, and movies and, and uh, maybe going out to bars or whatever. And just, but, but I would also argue that those are like, uh, those can be good sometimes, but yeah, like video games. Yeah. That's my big distraction. I will blow off important shit to, just be lazy all day you know it's it's fucked up it's not cool <laughs> <laughs> i don't know man it's 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 something about like get, 
taking on the challenge and like just working on it working on it just to get through and it's so satisfying it's like damn like you know <laughs> telling me dude i'm playing elden ring right now and i'm fucking man that's if that's not a grind like goddamn uh yeah. i have i haven't i mean i've seen all the memes for elden ring but uh yeah, out of 10 well, how does it rank for you oh my god it's 10 dude it's, it's 10. 10 out of 10 i i love from software games so i just like this is the best one they've ever done in my opinion so i'm just going off gotcha uh, yeah you know what i just seen and i don't know if you're a harry potter fan but the you seen that trailer for hogwarts legacy is that the what is that wait is that a video game or that new movie that's it's the out? video game that's dropping well they say it's at end of this year 2022 if you haven't seen it i suggest you check it out because like okay the reactions i was seeing from it is like it's like dark souls elden ring and all these <laughs> other games like combined and this is a harry potter Whoa. game like <laughs> I, to be so, honest yeah. like i grew up liking harry potter i don't like it like anymore i, yeah. I don't know i just you could admit I, I it know. you could admit no the whole, the, the whole, no the whole shit with uh jk rowling is like just oh, got me yeah. it, not liking that shit but um whatever yeah yeah no <laughs> I, don't I, dive I don't know if you like it or not i just uh, you know i'm just not a fan i'm not the biggest fan but i do like i didn't watch it or grew up with it like that like it's funny because basically what happened was my whole class went to see the first movie on a field trip and i didn't bring what? and i didn't that was fucking awesome i didn't bring the field trip <laughs> form so oh no man so i was God stuck damn. in school i was stuck in school everybody watched it and when they came back all they could talk about was how great harry potter was <laughs> and it turned so me off i was like fuck harry potter <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> until i got older and then i was like okay this is cool <laughs> it's like crying at a movie poster like you denied me <laughs> <laughs> my best friend's not my best friend anymore <laughs> I don't but, know who this Ron Weasley is or why he replaced me as my <laughs> best friend's friend. <laughs> yeah, man. So that, that's my Harry Potter <laughs> history. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to give this another spin. I think we got time for one more. Here we go. Number 14. Go. That dreaded 14. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I, don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> This one is, how could you be kinder to yourself? Uh, I could just get more used to the way I am. Like I, uh, like you, obviously I record a podcast and I actually have to edit the thing. So I, I mean, no one, yeah, no one likes hearing their own voice or at least like a, a lot of people don't. I have to listen to myself and like, you know, just trying to do comedy and, and like, often i'm not funny or good at it but i will always try like i have to hear those attempts and so like it can be the cringiest shit of all time like and uh just hearing my voice on top of that and not liking it I'm like oh my god this this is driving me fucking insane so i think uh i could just know what to expect out of myself and just kind of be be less harsh like i'm always critiquing myself um and when it comes to doing a podcast and having guests on um we do it through discord and some it's not always visual like we just started doing visual like this and sometimes like you and another person will go to say something at the same time and you just keep doing it over and over again like you just keep interrupting each other and it's like oh my god i i gotta be one i gotta be better with that shit but two i i just gotta like uh like in a sense of uh just being kinder to myself i just i just gotta not be as annoyed with myself and just know what to expect and just accept me as me yeah i got you man and i think that's that's the gap between like you said you were an eight out of ten as far as knowing yourself maybe once you get to that 10 out of 10 you know you'll, you'll definitely right. <laughs> I was thinking about that when you asked this question i was like oh shit do i know myself as an <laughs> eight out of ten like damn maybe i don't <laughs> uh i mean my, my... i lied i lied to 34 god no <laughs> you good man no worries uh i was a big i don't know if you ever watched the the show house but uh i was a big fan of that and is that the one with the doctor yeah that's the one with the doctor, doctor house okay and, uh... i've seen some of it i it's not that i don't like it i just i have not seen it um, but their their whole thing, I think the tagline was everybody lies. 
you know everybody lies to the doctor oh, okay. you know kind of thing and i mean that's that's the truth you know like as much as i want to think people are being honest with me completely i always have to just realize that like you know i could be wrong <laughs> uh, yeah i've lied to you this whole time about everything <laughs> i think so <laughs> there's the there's that and, and i <laughs> give you the benefit <laughs> of the doubt man <laughs> And this is no, this. <laughs> no. I, I've been, I've been good. I've been answering as honest as I can. This video is for you, so if anything, you, you've been lying to yourself. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Why did I do that to me? <laughs> All right. Well, this is a perfect segue into this uh, next exercise before we jump into the closeout questions. This is probably the most un uncomfortable part of the the interview. So, and you just okay. talked about editing and like. <laughs> having to watch oh, yourself sure. and hear yourself <laughs> this is the 34th mantra where i'm going to ask you to fill in fill in the blanks which is i am i can i will just three statements uh, but i'm also going to switch oh, the man. the view into you looking at you so it's like a reflection and you're talking to yourself oh, shit. <laughs> okay i forgot about this i heard about this <laughs> here we okay. go man. all right uh all right I Shit, am, I, I can, am. I will. <laughs> Fill that in for yourself, man. I, I am, I can, and then I, what? I will. Okay. Hmm. Uh, wait. <laughs> I, I, am, I am. I am, I can, I will. Um. Take your time, man. But then... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, man. I just wanted to do something so stupid, but I'll, I'll be genuine. I'll be totally genuine. Be yourself, um, man. If you want to do it stupid, that's cool, too. <laughs> it, it, I'm really Can not sure. Can I true. do two takes of this? <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead. Go for okay. it. Okay. So, uh, I am dope. I will. I can smoke. I will toke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got you. <laughs> I hate myself. God damn it. No, no, I'm so no. stupid. Um... No, I, uh, uh, hmm, curious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought that was a serious one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was serious about that. That's going to come at some point in the future, but, um, uh, God damn, I keep going to like some weird space in my mind where I'm like, why would I, what? <laughs> um, okay. You can close so, your eyes uh, if it helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh i am i can i will i don't know why i can't get that straight um hmm. i am fine i can't i can do better I will. Uh, I. Hmm. I will succeed. I don't know. That's that's. <laughs> yeah, that's you that will. Work? You will succeed, man. Let me. Let me yeah. Hit we'll that. All succeed. I, I believe in you. I, I believe in me. We're we're gonna do fine. For sure, man. And. If you ever need a reminder, now you have it for yourself. You have this, the sound bite of you telling you yeah. that you will succeed. Oh, man. <laughs> Gotta hear that. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, man. Moving on to the closeout questions. Uh, this first one is a shout out question. So, you know, you don't have to drop anyone's name. You maybe could generalize it. But this one is who has been the greatest mentor in your life? Hmm. Well, there's like a few people that come to mind. Uh, one of them was briefly in my life um, and they passed away, actually. Um, but they, they were there at a critical time. But, you know, I will say it was like. Uh, the first boss that I had that was a good boss um, he just kind of went above and beyond to like uh, 
just kind of be there for like and, and be there for the people who he worked with and worked under him but like felt like a team member and it was all about camaraderie and like we're all in this shit together like being able to level with all of his employees in a way that like wouldn't get him in trouble you know like and you know saying like we all know this is a shit job or whatever you know like it, there was kind of that there but it was like just kind of showed um camaraderie and like uh empathy and uh and i think that's really important and it really stuck with me i still it, it's been like years and years and years since i worked with him but every now and then i'll text him and just ask how he's doing because i'm like Hey man, like, uh, he, he was like, I think like eight or nine years older than me, but just really was a good dude and, and handled a lot on his shoulders. And it kind of, it kind of just showed what like a good leader is and like, so good. Like he did a lot for us. We wanted to do a lot for him. Um, because you know, he just felt like, uh, he, he earned our respect in that way. I mean that that's the mark of a good leader, right? Being able to yeah to make that. I mean, I've had uh, I don't know if you know this, but I've had like 17 jobs in 10 years, and you know, just thinking about my bosses and all that stuff. You know, I think it's it's, it's interesting to come across a boss that it, in their career, it's not like they're pushing so hard for their own advancement, and you know, they they can you know build that empathy with the workers underneath them. Uh, yeah, because I feel like that. That's at least in my case, I've come across a lot of folks who, who do feel that way. Like, you know, my boss isn't really about team growth. It's more about this is my next stop until I get to the to the next next part. Um, yeah, which I can't blame them for that. But it's also very individualistic driven. When you know, I I, I really care about everybody as a whole. So it doesn't yeah. always connect. But there are, like you said, bosses out there who who do get it and are trying to build people up you know not just build themselves up um, yeah you know what's funny is like that person who thinks like that is like kind of duping themselves because like when my boss was doing all that for us and we did it back for him it just sent him higher up the chain like you know and and that's pretty much what happened like he just got offered a better position and then from there kept going and going and like just always kept in contact with all of us and like uh that's i would dope. see him outside of work and like yeah it's like he just like by doing the right thing actually was rewarded like in the right way so that, that's all the nice people out in the world that's what we hoping for you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh moving on to the next question which is actually a question from my previous guest and guess who that was <laughs> shout out to rob, rob. <laughs> <laughs> his question for you and maybe he's asked you this before i'm not sure but what is something in your life that was insignificant but ended up meaning so much more so he's never asked anything like that to me <laughs> <laughs> in his life all right um hmm insignificant but but meant so much more like you know in hindsight you're like damn that moment or that that gesture it means a lot it means a lot even though in that moment it was like oh whatever yeah um Hmm. Damn. That is that's making me think. Um Honestly, like my mind just kind of goes right back to the thing I just said before. It was like I I never like I said, I never had a boss like that and just like it made me want to like just do better like in general. Like it made me want to care for like uh anyone who would be my team around me whether it's work or not it, it made me actually really value like um teams and like relationships and, and shit like that ever since then like just uh seeing that that kind of play out like that i was just like oh um but it, it seems like i only like you man like i truly worked like a shit ton of jobs in like probably 10 years it's like actually kind of a running joke with like some of my friends oh i feel you like, always has a different job again like you know it's like i don't know what the fuck i want to do man i'm trying to like try things out but um yeah it's like i was it was like it was a brief experience but yeah like it, it did 
bring a lot of value to me, especially in hindsight. Like, uh, sorry to answer it with the same exact thing, but oh, that's you could. like yeah. where, where my mind went immediately. For sure, so. for sure. Uh, my next question is, what would you like to ask the next guest that comes on to 34 Questions? Whoa. Hmm. Um, if they had as much money as Jeff Bezos, what would they do with that money? I got you. I'm just writing it down. As much money yeah, yeah. as Jeff Bezos, what would you do? Man. Because it's because, like, I know, like, if you ask that question, like, just running into someone on the street, like, you didn't know, and that's the first question you asked them, they'd most likely go to like oh i buy a house i buy a car and stuff but like after all this introspection jesus i can't talk after all these like these deep thoughts and like kind of just deep conversation like this um like they might not go to those like things right away those surface level kind of things like they it might actually make them be like huh i don't know maybe help a cause i care for so who knows i think gauging people like this gets them to, to actually think more more deeply so i hope sure. they they answer with great concern and consideration i i hope so too man um uh, but you know we'll see it depends on the person you know how, how deep yeah. they want to get right uh, that's true and then my last question for you man the question that ties everything together 100 years from now 200 years from now your descendants are watching this video what would you like to tell them? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> man, I, uh, I'd say, uh, your great, great, great grand pop pop was a, was a wackadoo man. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he'd spank you for not, for not trying to go for your dreams. That's what I'd say. For sure, man. <laughs> They so will hear stupid. you. <laughs> a wackadoo man. I like that. <laughs> wackadoo. A wackadoo. That's what I'd say to them. And they'd be like, that guy sucks. <laughs> but in my mind, the way my mind th works is that maybe your descendant will be a wackadoo too. And they'll be like, man, damn. That's the dream. That's the goal. That's that's what I hope for. <laughs> and they're like, I feel so connected to him now because I'm a wackadoo and he's a wackadoo. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, man. It's about that time. And I just want to thank you again for stopping by. Uh, this, uh, this has been a great conversation. Uh, I think yeah, I have thank one. Thank you for having <laughs> me. This is fucking, this was awesome. This is really cool. I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I think I have one more co-host to, to try to track down from you guys, at least the Buttery Males podcast. Uh, and yeah, you, you guys can let him know, peer pressure him to, to get on. I don't think he's, uh, can you remind me his name again? The fourth person? I, well, yeah, Zach. Zach yeah, Zach. yeah, yeah. Is yeah. he the probably the hardest person to <laughs> to get on here? I don't, you know, I, I'm not sure what's going on with him. To be honest, I, I like, I think he's nervous about it. I think he's truly nervous about it. And so. that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. Um, you know, even my closest friends are too nervous to come on here because uh, you know they don't want to to feel so vulnerable sometimes you know so yeah uh, I, I get it and there's really no pressure and hopefully maybe i'll, I'll get on your guys's podcast first so he'll, he'll know who, what kind I of person would i am love that i i would i know i would love that i know i we i talked to rob and jacob just before coming on here and we we definitely mentioned that we would love to have you on that'd be great man that'd be great uh, I want to thank all the folks out there as well. If you tuned in on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube, much love to you guys. Um, from, I was going to say, it was, oh yeah, I was going to steal this from you guys because Rob told me, put me on game. But you know, if you like the content, please tell a friend or share with a friend, you know, instead of having to do the whole like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, remember to reach out, reach forward. As always, much love. And we'll catch you guys next time on 34 Questions. Peace. Peace. And then it, it fades from there, man. Um, cool.